On this week's episode of Tiger Turf Talk, we host the brand new head groundskeeper of the Columbia Fireflies, Miss Morgan Hunter. This is an awesome episode about an incredible person who is just starting off her career in the role of a head groundskeeper after spending time as the assistant groundskeeper in Columbia. It truly is inspiring to see the third female head groundskeeper in minor league baseball and to truly see what it's going to be like to see the transformation of our industry through these individuals um, that are skilled, talented, and better than most of us. Um, this episode is pretty awesome. She's an awesome person. It was great to talk to her and hear about what she's excited about, what she's looking forward to, and everything that goes into being a head groundskeeper and just seeing that there's a bright future for us in this industry. Um, we hope you enjoy this episode of Tiger Turf Talk. Good afternoon and welcome to the 64th episode of Tiger Turf Talk. I'm your host, Drew Miller. Today we have on an incredible guest. We have the head groundskeeper of the Columbia Fireflies, Morgan Hunter. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, you know, another day. Uh, we've actually been out of school all week because of snow, so that's been nice. Um, so yeah. that's different, you know, for most turf managers. Please don't yeah. come after me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, um, hey, I threw a mow down this week, so it's been a really weird week everywhere. I mean, it's left and right. Whatever way the wind's blowing, I guess, you know. Uh, so I want to start off by congratulating you, obviously, with your promotion there in Columbia. Um, sort of just want to start off what it's been like for you, uh, the sort of the feeling, again, becoming the head groundskeeper and what that process has been. Um, I'm leading up to like one of the most critical times for groundskeepers preparing for the season. Um, I mean, I've known about the promotion here for a couple of weeks now. So before it got announced, which is really nice because – had a moment of freak out, you know, there's a lot of pressure that comes with it, especially being a young head groundskeeper. And I think a lot of people like act like it doesn't happen or so whenever it happened to me, I was like, Oh God, like I got this job. Now I need to like be able to take it all on. Just like suppress those feelings. Like you're fine. You're fine. Like just handle it. You're fine. But once I got through the freak out with a good trip home and some help from my boss, it's going well now. So just getting everything straightened away for the season and hopefully this warm winter kind of sticks around and is nice to me my first season so that would be great right it's all yeah. there's always those moments where you're like okay this is real this is yep, yeah mm -hmm, yep. we're doing this i'm gonna yep <laughs> it's like one day wake up the assistant with no decision like final decisions and the next day you're like oh god there it's all me now it's so me. what so what are you uh what are you looking forward to again, sort of being again, that person that's making those decisions? Obviously you've been through a lot of different uh, jobs. Sports surf is a very uh, unique industry. What is it that you sort of want to keep the same add, subtract, change, sort of put your own signature on things. Is there anything in particular that you're looking forward to this season coming in as your first season? Mm -hmm. um, I really think just like trying to be more involved with the front office and like, Whenever I was with the Indians, Joey did a really good job of trying to, like, make that, like, a cohesive unit in the front office and grounds. Because, I mean, there can be that very different, like, we're off on our own little island down here. And I can go days without seeing people from the front office, especially right now. So, I think really trying to make it a point to, like, be upstairs and be involved and really just doing that would be a huge change for us here, I think. And it would be a good change. What's your relationship like with the front office? Obviously, I mean, you've been there for how many years is it now? I just started here in March, actually. Oh, wow. Year. Look at yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> quick, quick yeah. transition, you know, just get yeah. through it, right? Um, <laughs> what is it like and uh, how have they been, again, being supportive during this time? Again, such a crazy time to, again, at a young age, just start making all these decisions. Obviously, you can see your calendar. Leah Withrow would be proud, by the way. Uh, <laughs> we were at uh, OTF and she gave a presentation on her calendars. And I was like, well, look at yeah. that. She's got a calendar, too, and everything. This one actually was started by Danny Lazito when he was here. And then my previous boss, Drew, just kind of continued it on. And it's a really good system. So it's definitely sticking around. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. We have like seven of them, honestly. It's kind yeah. of it's kind of how I'm. I'm trying to find each one. <laughs> That's the hard part. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it is what it is, though. But how has the support from them been? And 
going into everything again march it's a quick turnaround to become the groundskeeper yeah um it's been fantastic my our president here actually brad shank has been wonderful um he had his first like introduction into the sports industry with a grounds internship so that has really been beneficial i think because he knows a lot of the stresses that we take on but he's also a leader that'll really do anything for you and when i had my moment of freak out you know he was very kind to me and helped me through that and really helped the transition process really well that's always good to hear especially from again the higher ups Mm -hmm. um sort of a shift uh what sort of brought you to the turf grass industry it's always interesting to hear people's stories about everything you know uh, oh i've ran into somebody and they said you should look at this or it's uh, i've always planned on doing it um uh what was it for you that brought you to turf and what sort of brought you to the sports turf side of things because again golf is a big draw for a lot of people but again sports turf is just a really nice niche and everything what was it for you that brought you to it Um, I grew up in Assumption, Illinois, which is a really small ag town. So I was really heavily involved with agriculture and wanted to get into ag like production. I just didn't know how that would look. But um, growing up, I also went to Bush Stadium all the time with my family. So going down there and just being around the atmosphere of the stadium, like I loved it. I'm really introverted. So it's really weird that going to a stadium, I feel super comfortable and, you know, 50,000 people around, I'm, I'm fine with it, but, you know, speaking situations, I'm like, oh, no, I don't, I don't know, but just going down there all the time and seeing the field, I was actually down there on an FFA trip, and we were down there pregame, and they were out there working on the field, and I was like, man, that'd be kind of cool to be able to say I work at, like, Bush Stadium or a stadium of any sort, really, and I typed it in on my phone, like, how do I work at the field of Bush Stadium, and it said turf grass management, and I really never looked back. I was just kind of like, all right, that, that sounds cool. That's what I'm doing. Sign me up. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> I was ready awesome. to go. <laughs> Cardinals fan though, huh? Oh yeah. Oh man. Oh, yep. I'm a, I made I'm the a... internship in Chicago. Pretty interesting. <laughs> so going into that, where else have you worked? And again, previous, uh, timeframes, internships, obviously are a huge mm-hmm. proponent of what we do as turf managers and getting us to that next step into where you're at as a head groundskeeper. Uh, Mm -hmm. What were your past uh, work experiences and how do you sort of uh, see the influence of them being again, working in Chicago in a cool season temperature down to again, Columbia, where you're in a warm season zone, Um, Mm -hmm. sort of breaking down each one and how you sort of used everything that you got from it, you know? Yeah. Um, Well, I first got my start in turf actually back home at a municipal golf course, we have a golf course and, that was pretty good because, I mean, municipal golf courses usually don't have the largest budget. So you kind of learn to work with what you got and make do with everything. So that was really good for me. But I like and I like to golf and stuff like that. I just didn't know if that was what I wanted long term. So I knew whenever I got to Ohio State, I really wanted to try and dive into sports turf and just see what it was like. And I really got pushed to apply for the Cubs internship and luckily got it. So that first summer I was in Ohio, I went to Chicago and did that. Was there for three months. And then that fall I was able to get on with the athletic department at school. So then I, I was there for the remainder of my career, except for my internship in Billings, which I always wanted to go to Montana. So I just emailed a team out there and was like, Hey, would you guys take on a grounds intern? And, Jeff out there was like, heck yeah, like, <laughs> come on out, because they didn't really get a whole lot of sports turf kids. They probably like, said, wait, what? Do you want to <laughs> yeah. come out here? Really? Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't even have to ask twice. Well, yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I went out there for three months, and then whenever I graduated that winter, the next year I was supposed to do a full season internship with the Indians, and then COVID kind of kicked that one to the curb. So I got to go back home and be a hog farmer for a couple months and work at the golf course again. <laughs> so but, <laughs> with everything that went into that, you know, uh, different levels, different budgets, you were talking about all that. What is it that, again, your work experience that uh, really prepared you to get you to this point where, again, you were talking about making the big decisions when it comes to budgeting, managing personnel, all these different things. What is it that you've sort of taken away from your past experiences to now? I think every place really kind of, I mean, you take away things that you like or you don't like. And so things that I've liked at some of the places with lower budgets or things I've liked with the higher budgets, like 
you can take those things and implement them where you're at now, whether it be through management style or just practices on the field, whether it be cultural or how you take care of the mounds or whatever. So I really think just picking out what I've liked from each place and bringing it here and what I've liked from the management and trying to help do like what, you know, like Matt Williams did at Ohio state for me or Jeff with the uh, Mustangs, like he put so much trust in me. I want to be able to kind of do that with my assistants and my interns and hopefully kind of be a person that they'll be able to look to or come to for advice. Like I am with them. Absolutely. It sounds awesome. Uh, you mentioned OSU, uh, with everything that goes into, again, a turf program and everything, Mm -hmm. Pam and everybody up there are phenomenal. I've actually got to know them really well over the last few months. Uh, they invited Mm -hmm. me up to OTF and talk to talk and present being able to go to things like that. What is it about OSU that, uh, your education again, sort of prepared you for these jobs, these internships, um, And what do you think that was so unique about your education there that is applicable to the jobs in the industry compared to, again, maybe other schools or other experiences you've heard from with your former bosses or anything? Mm -hmm. I think OSU is really unique in the way that like we do have Pam from, you know, England who has connections over there. And we also have Matt Williams who now works with the, I think it's SGL light company from over there. So like, there's connections through OSU that some schools may not have that are really good for the program. And they really help you push yourself and get out there. But I think the education part of it really just comes down to the relationships. Like we can learn all day in the classroom, like what it's going to be in this perfect ideal world. But when you get out there, you know, humidity is a factor, weather is a factor, special events are a factor and that necessarily isn't taught in the book (laughs) no it is not (laughs) no not at all so sort of segueing into that um again as a head groundskeeper there are so many different things that you're looking to complete as a turf manager and there's been such a big shift especially for minor league baseball. And it's kind of still unbelievable to me that again, nothing's changed like budgetary wise and things like that you need in order to maintain through all these events. Um, What has been sort of your experiences for again, small events ranging from again, maybe a a betting practice for a corporation to, I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've dealt with concerts at your facilities and I I know in Chicago, you probably definitely (laughs) dealt with a lot of those. Um, What do you think, um, again, sort of handling, excuse me, handling those situations going into your first year, uh, how do you sort of combat the challenges that come to, again, sports turf managing uh, when it comes to, again, keeping your bosses, again, happy about, okay, we can have this event, right? Uh, Well, (laughs) we were going to air fry this day. And they're like, no, we need it today. And you're like, well, we're going to lose a whole month here if we can't do this. What is it you expect and how do you see sort of that going down when it comes to, again, this season and again, past that? Mm. I mean, again, I'm, I'm pretty thankful because like Brad knows a lot of the stuff that does go into it. So we're able to work a lot closer and like he's understanding and I'm understanding that we do need money because I want to pay for things for the field and <laughs> I need to help in ways that I can, any way I can do that. I think, you know, between concerts and things like that, like, I enjoy them. I mean, it is, it does put a, you know, wrench in the plans every now and then with what I'm wanting to do or what we're wanting to do. But just being able to have that different challenge, because I mean, baseball can get very repetitive. I mean, the weather is a factor in it, but, you know, it's same thing, like batting practice, game, post game, next day, same thing. All of it, again, six days in a row. So it's like, throwing in that extra event like it's fun like we had joe nichols here last year like it was stressful you know my boss at the time was out of town so i kind of got handed the reins that what a nice guy (laughs) (laughs) you know i I mean take this it's fine i'm gonna i'll be back you know (laughs) i mean i really enjoyed it because it did give me a taste of like kind of helping run the ship for a little bit so i mean that was kind of cool i I definitely didn't expect running the ship would come this soon, (laughs) but I mean, I enjoy events like that because it does bring something different to the table and a different challenge to our like season 
We also had a spike ball here this past year. Oh, no. Which <laughs> was very interesting. Did they let you put something on the field or did they say no? No, it was on the grass and it was oh, recorded no. for ESPN. So it had to be in one spot the whole time. So we had quite quite the circle going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. I that mean, it came be- back, and we didn't have to resod, thankfully. But wow, that's that's impressive. Learned a lesson. That's impressive. You know, yeah. that should be one of the pictures at the STMA student challenge. <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it was a spike ball tournament. Yep, yep. We studied that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez, that's crazy. <laughs> um, last year again, there was a shift when it came to minor league baseball. MLB took over. Uh, again, sort of everything that has to deal with their teams, you know, their affiliates and everything. Uh, I think you guys are affiliated of the Royals. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Yep. So with all of that, there was again, records sent to MLB standards and expectations for you guys. Um, mm-hmm. Can you sort of discuss some of those and how you again are going to maintain that through this year coming up, especially again, when we talk about events and expectations with less money compared to get an MLB team. Um mm-hmm. What do you see in the future? And is there any changes with that that you can see that might have an impact on how you do things? Um, I mean, for us, really, I mean, we're a pretty new stadium. We went up in, I think, first season was 2016, I believe, or 2017. So, I mean, we're we're fairly new. And so a lot of our, like, stadium and everything has met those standards. There are some things we have to change. But thankfully, I don't think as of now there's really on-field like much on field we have to change maybe our infield grade a little bit you know the cone kind of flattening that out but I mean really other than that I mean COVID last year their rules for that were kind of challenging we had to run from left field for our drags instead of being in the dugout so that was a lovely workout after already being there for six hours you know what a grab the kids out of the stands you know what (laughs) follow this guy okay yeah (laughs) Yeah. Game day uh, grounds crew experience. Grab a drag and run from left field today for us. (laughs) We appreciate you. (laughs) We're going to stay back here. Okay. (laughs) Um, With that, I mean, there are so many different aspects of the job. Do you have anything that you really enjoy uh, more than anything else? You know, Uh, mine was always getting on a mower. You know, that was my time Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. dealing with whatever it is. I just plug in and zone out you know is there anything that you really enjoy about the job uh compared to the other aspects of it Mm -hmm. i mean i would probably say mowing also is a big one but i really enjoy the clay work taking care of the mound or home but i think at the end of the night after the stadium has been crazy and all the families have been there i think the coolest moment for me is whenever everybody's gone the field's quiet. It's ready for the next day. The lights are on, but you just feel like you're just out in the middle of nowhere when really you're right there in the middle of a city. I just love like the peacefulness of it. That, that was also, and I, I used to work in New York and Pittsburgh for the Mets. Yeah. And it's, it's those, it is those, those moments where it's like, wow, really? Like yeah. right outside is crazy, but I mean, right now this is pretty nice, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I can appreciate that for sure. Um, with everything again, more into the job, uh, what is it again that you sort of see as a challenge when it comes to the management of the field? Um, again, being in that zone where again, you're not really down far enough South where it's not going to be humid to all, you know, it's sort of that transition zone edge again, being on the lower end of it, which is nice, but any challenges that you guys face on an annual basis and sort of the things that you do to combat those issues? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm still learning here. It's my going to be my second season with Bermuda. <laughs> so there's still a lot of it I'm learning, but I think being a hundred percent Bermuda is definitely a very big blessing for me. Cause I know they've had some pretty bad uh, grow ins previously. So Danny made that transition when he was here. And I'm really thankful for that because that definitely makes our jobs a lot easier. What's the makeup of the field and what type of turf are you dealing with? We are 419 everywhere except behind home plate. Danny put down some latitude as a test plot. 
how is that dealing with everything and sort of being in that location right behind home? Probably some shade problems. Um, not too bad, really, especially during the season. It's actually, I mean, our shade problem isn't terrible, but the latitude has definitely held up a lot better through every test that we can tell than the 419. So I think any major renovation that we do, we'd probably lean more that direction. Um, but yeah, I'm a huge fan of the latitude. I mean, it also does get baby because it is behind home plate, but at the same time, like any scalping we do or anything, it, I mean, it bounces back two times as quick as that 419 does yeah we so at brentsville what we've been aiming to do is we've been adding different varieties on each field that we do so Mm -hmm. a lot of the fields that are renovated they were sort of pasture in a sense and that's the kindest term for it it was the when i arrived there were like five fields that had ankle breakers like the practice fields were not usable for soccer because if you kick the ball it bounced 10 feet up in the air just for passing (laughs) 10 feet so we would come in, we'd spray everything out, level everything out, add sand, whatever it was that we can do most inexpensive you know, <laughs> terms. And then yeah. we'd hand sprig everything and mm. grow in that way. So we put in Latitude, Northbridge, Tahoma 31. Uh, we seeded Riviera and then Patriot was the first field we did. And we already have Patriot on our other fields. Mm-hmm. it's patriot and everybody it's funny because when you look at everything and sort of the advancements when it comes to the genetics and everything patriot was the first one that was like the big wow like it can get up yeah. way more north than anything we've ever seen before and now everybody that sees patriot like look what, what is this <laughs> get this out of here you know again ours is still doing pretty well but again there's yeah. a scalping issue and all that but Everybody's now like, ooh, Tahoma is the Cadillac. Oh, we've got Iron Cutter and everything. It's, it's just funny to see sort of like the arms race of Bermuda grass. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Um, how has that been for you again, coming from the bluegrass states and everything and dealing with the different like blue uh, Kentucky bluegrass and Bermuda are two different animals. Mm-hmm. And what's funny to me from what I've seen, there are enough similarities. It's just the aggression level is probably the best term what is it for you that you've seen and what you've been able to sort of translate down into columbia where you're working the first time that we scalped in verticut here i was terrified i was like oh my god what happened like this is insane what are you doing (laughs) yeah i was like this can't be right and like brad even up in the front office was like just wait until you see your first verticut and scalp he's like you're not gonna believe it i was like okay and then we did it and i was like oh my gosh (laughs) It's like, you are not kidding. This is alarmingly brown. Like, is this going to (laughs) recover? Yep. It's very, it's very, it's crazy when you do it. You're like, and it's funny to do it in front of you and like high schoolers and stuff. Yeah. And they're like, what are we doing? Really? What are you doing? I'm like, guys, it's okay. (laughs) We're, we're going to be fine. Like (laughs) six days later, we're good. You know? Yep. Yep. So yeah. Is there anything else other than doing that, that you've noticed, uh, and really, what are you focusing on during the season, cultural speaking, you know, aerating, mm-hmm. verticutting, different things like that. Mm-hmm. And again, we were talking about such tight time frames that sometimes get even tighter because they want to add events, you know, and different things like that. But yeah. what are you focusing on? Um, last year, we had a problem with our tractor, so we weren't able to do everything that we we're wanting to, like on time. So this year, I'm really hoping to kind of do more infrequent or more frequent but like less se- severe, like verticutting and things like that. Like just getting out there a lot more with the aerator, trying to keep that compaction down. Cause we definitely have some spots that got a little more compacted than I think some of us would like, but I think just, I really enjoy the cultural practices of it. So that's where I really, that's where like out there aerating all day long, sweeping it up. Like I love that part of the job. So, I mean, as often as I can do it, you can bet I'll be out there <laughs> with a sweeper or aerator. And... Absolutely. Is there, when you're aerating, where you focusing more on core or are you focusing on needle? Uh, and it's funny when you said, like, I love being out there with everything, uh, culturally speaking. It's funny to me in my past experience with my old uh, bosses, they would find different ways the walk behind aerator i walk out one time my boss is like laying across the 648 <laughs> like i'm not standing and walking you crazy i'm like okay this is not gonna end well but <laughs> just things like that um but what are you uh, again focusing on when you come to air rating whether it's needle uh bayonet different things like that 
mainly just needle tining, um, pull cores probably there in the fall, maybe some smaller cores early on in the season, but pretty much just needle tining and really hammering down on our infield and skirts. It's like whenever I was in Chicago, we wouldn't do the entire field every 10 or 14 days, but I mean, back arc, skirts, infield, that was being done at least every 10 to 14 days. Who were you working for up in Chicago, by the way? Spillman? The yeah. Was oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. My bad. I should no, have <laughs> who's, who's your boss? Which, no, uh, I, I had almost, I was looking to go there and uh, my former boss, he was the assistant in New York and became the head in Pittsburgh. And I kind of like uh -huh. was pulled that direction, but it was the year they won the World Series. So I was, oh, yeah. Like, would I have I gotten a ring is the question, you know, like. 110 years, you know, there might have been like, you know what, the interns get it too. This is, <laughs> this oh, is worth it, you know. You probably would have. You yeah. probably would have. No, it's uh, so, and he's a great guy. Um, but sort of going into that, are there any mentors in your career that really have had a lasting impact on what you're doing mm -hmm. now? And again, still answer the phone when you call. Um, I mean, I talked to one of my Dr. Goatley at Tech the other day. We're working on something for STMA and just being able to have those connections and being able to talk to people. Is there anybody that you really rely on still as a mentor when you're coming into this, uh, again, first year as a head groundskeeper uh, yeah. time? And there've been a lot of guys over the years, especially like, I mean, Dan Kiermeyer, he's the head guy at the Cubs now, but I mean, I really looked up to him whenever I was there. He really taught the interns a lot while we were there that year. And being my first year in sports turf, that was something I really held on to. But, like, uh, Brent Packer, Brian Gimble at OSU, like, they have been wonderful. And I just actually went back and visited them whenever I went to the Michigan State game there. So that was kind of fun. But I think my biggest two would probably be Matt Williams and Jeff Lindbergh. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> Matt Williams, I mean – he's the one that really pushed me to do the Cubs interview because I was like, Oh, you know, I haven't had any sports turf experience. Like this is not going to go well. Like I'm wasting their time and it's just not a good thing. And he's like, no, you, know, like, you can't tell yourself. No, like you got to try this out. Just go for it. So I really appreciate everything that he's done because he's really pushes or he pushed the students while he was there to really get out of their comfort zone and get involved with everything. And Jeff Lindbergh, while I was in Billings, I mean, him and his family pretty much adopted me while I was out there. And I went, like, camping with him on the 4th of July, played on their slow-pitch softball team. But he was actually one of the first ones I told that I got the promotion and kind of freaking out, like, hey, do you think I can do this? Like, is this the right move for me? And he was – I mean, I can call him or text him any time. And he might not answer, like, right away. But, I mean, he's got two boys and takes care of the whole athletic department for the city of Muscatine. So – I really appreciate him and everything he's done for me. That's awesome. And it's, it's always good to have people like that, you know, especially again, like you're saying, having those moments, you're like, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> I need to talk to someone. Yep. <laughs> like, oh, uh, gosh. <laughs> with everything, you know, being the head groundskeeper or head sports field manager, when it comes to anything, there are so many different things that people don't think about that you guys take care of, whether it's managing again, a budget, managing a grounds crew managing different things that again when you say head groundskeeper like oh they take care of the grass that's it you know or the, the dirt or yeah. the soil or whatever you want to call it like what is it that you are looking forward to again coming up into this first year whether that again budgeting managing personnel different things again that you see as a challenge that you're excited to face i think a budget's a big one because i mean i have some records but not a whole lot and luckily for me the computer crashed on me here right after i uh took over so i lost some of the more of the records <laughs> but uh so that'll be a an interesting challenge but i think also just managing people i really enjoy the team aspect of the job so i really am looking forward to just kind of bringing people on and building a good team to take care of the field every day absolutely um now, have you, uh, and again, you, it's been a while now. How is everything going finding that staff and bringing in the people that you, again, are going to be working with? Got a few applications for the positions that we're hiring for. Um, 
think finding an intern here is always interesting because the closest turf school, I believe, is Clemson. And, I mean, having stipends and stuff like that kind of sometimes makes it harder, especially whenever, you know, you got to move here, pay for rent, things like that. So hopefully we can maybe get some sport management kids or something like that from USC or somewhere. But it'll be interesting. I know we've got quite a few of the game day guys coming back, I believe, which will be good. Kind of get some familiar faces I'm working with. (laughs) That's always good. It's always good. Um, Again, being such close proximity again to South Carolina with everything, do you see anything being like sort of a connection with maybe again you're sw- talking sports ter- uh, for sorry sports managers that was it mm. um, connections with maybe the grounds crew there having them help out in the sense of again younger individuals who are college students looking for a new avenue again sports mm. serve everything we do with our program is sort of showing kids that avenue and that uh, option, you know, is there anything around there that you think could help create that avenue again, sort of funneling to you uh, working for you during the season? Yeah, I really, I do think so. I mean, Danny, the uh, former groundskeeper here, he introduced me to Clark over at USC. So that's been a good resource for me so far. And I'm really looking forward to meeting the other guys and, getting to know them and hopefully that will be a good avenue for them to maybe bring me some interns or game day guys, something like that possibly. So. Absolutely. Um, And I, with this question, again, you're the third head groundskeeper in minor league baseball. That is a female in history. Um, Mm -hmm. It's such an inspiration to students of mine. And again, individuals who are coming into this industry to be able to see that, um, can you sort of speak what that means to you? And again, it, it might not mean anything. And I, I apologize if that, that, uh, is something that again, you don't want to talk about or anything like that, but again, it is huge and it is a male dominant uh, industry. And mm-hmm. again, I tell everyone this because it's true. Whenever I have kids out on our fields working and our students and the ones that are not going to mess anything up are the females, you know, the boys are reckless, you know, they don't like, to, they like to break things <laughs> like I thought it would work. And like, what would it be again? What does that mean to, again, for you to be that person that again, can inspire students of mine? I have a student. She uh, just worked a summer for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, yeah. she decided she wanted to pursue something after me- meeting Nicole Sherry and having that opportunity and different things like that. What does it mean yeah. for you again, to be that person to so many? One, I think it's weird that I am, or could be that for people, honestly. Um, I mean, I take a lot of pride in being that, but I think there's also a lot of pressure that especially the other women in the industry would definitely probably agree with me on that, you know, like we do have a bigger pressure in the fact that we aren't just representing the turf industry. We're specifically also representing the other women in the industry. So knowing that people are going to walk out here and know that a woman's taking care of this field, like I really want to make sure like it's the best that I can have it like looking great all the time because I want to make sure that I'm representing the women in the industry. Well, not just myself, but for like the future generation, like for the next head groundskeepers that are females, like just proving that we are capable of taking care of a field just as well as a man can, if not better in some circumstances, like you were saying, sometimes Definitely guys better. might be a little Definitely more better. reckless. Or- <laughs> <laughs> Definitely better. I promise you. <laughs> and it- with everything again, uh, obviously this is working towards something, you know, whether that is mm-hmm. where you're at now or whether that's something in the future, do you have any future aspirations when it comes to being a sports surf manager? I think the ultimate goal would just be somewhere where I'm happy going to work every day, whether I do end up in the majors or not. Like, I mean, that was my ultimate goal when I first started, but I've, you know, found leadership here that I really enjoy working with. So it'd be finding somewhere like that. Um, I think ultimately probably somewhere in the Midwest, you know, I was born and raised in Illinois and I'd like to be a day's drive away, you know, a little like, bit closer to home is always nice. Yeah, yeah. Just a little bit, but anywhere where I'm happy going to work every day and enjoy the front office and the people I surround myself with, I think I'll be fine wherever that is. That's awesome. Again, and it, that's it's always good to hear things like that. You know, a lot of 
a lot of young people are always like, yeah, I want that shiny Cadillac. I want to be the nice, like mm. MLB head groundskeeper at mm-hmm. some point. Like, and I always learned from like people like Matt Brown, like the pressures that come with that, the understanding yeah. of again, what it is. And the, I'm not saying that's not in minor league baseball in any way, shape or mm-hmm. form, but national television, having it again yeah. on screen, having someone breathing down your neck every five seconds and everything. Yeah. But being happy again is the biggest thing. And mm-hmm. right now during a time where again, it's hard to do that with COVID and everything, it's definitely, it's refreshing to hear. So I, I appreciate that a lot yeah. um, with everything again, uh, coming up in two weeks down in your neck of the woods, actually um, yep. uh, what it uh, with sports store manager association conference coming up, what is it meant to, for you to be a part of the STMA um, and how has it had an impact in your career, whether that is the conference or just, again, just connections and different things that have come from that? Um, what has it meant to you in your career? I think it's, I mean, it's meant so much in my career because I've met so many people through STMA and, you know, just doing the student challenges and getting out there and meet new people from like whenever I was at school, like I was in cool season, meeting people with warm season background. Like it's just cool seeing how many different avenues there are in sports turf and getting to interact with everyone and just showing up every year to this conference where it's like, you just saw people like a week ago and it's like, Oh, Hey, how are you? Like, it's like, you haven't missed a beat with people. It's just really cool to see. It's such a tight knit community of people all over the country that come together and help each other out. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more on that. I think this year will be a little bit different, you know, with the whole COVID skip year and everything. It'll be really yeah. great to see everyone. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited. We're bringing students down to it. So we're actually stopping in Columbia on the way down. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to spend the night there. We're heading down to uh, Charlotte this Sunday before um, okay. to see Chad Price and those guys down at Carolina Green. And uh, it'll be awesome to see everybody down there. And again, being able to, like you said, feel like it's a week, but yep. <laughs> it's been two years now, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, is there anything again, again, from the conference specifically that you take away other than again, seeing everybody, is there anything that you can take away, uh, whether that's certification credits for certain things or different things that come along with that? Yeah. I mean, we can get our recertification for our spray licenses and stuff like that, which is good. But I mean, just, learning from other people that maybe have a similar field or a similar situation than you in the education sessions is really, really good. And I feel like you don't necessarily always realize how much you're going to learn whenever you go down there. And then you walk away and you're like, holy crap, like I didn't realize like that was an option or this was an option, or maybe I should try this on my field or whatever. Like there's so much knowledge there that it, you don't realize how much you take away every year. It is true. Again, even with like, not even like the educational sessions, like the whole trade show, seeing something, you're mm-hmm. like, wait a second. Yeah. That's not real. Like, yeah. <laughs> where, where did you yeah. come from? <laughs> but no, I completely agree with that. Um, sort of going into that, when, again, starting in this industry, again, at such a young age and still being sort of in that young time frame with everything, mm-hmm. What have you sort of seen change in our industry, whether that's for the better or for the worse? What have you sort of seen change and what do you hope to see in the next few years coming up? I think a lot of the changes come from like whenever I was first getting into it, like they're really trying to figure out how to um, kind of make people more interested in our industry. And I feel like now we're kind of figuring some small things out and we're actually kind of taking off and running with those ideas and trying to really pull more people in. I think uh, there's just been a lot since that's, there's been a lot change, but a lot that hasn't, which sounds really weird, but. (laughs) It's true though. You know, you know, one of the big things that I've always taken away is that we will always have our core like practices, you know, like airification, all those things are not going to change. Yes, there are like 15 new ways they're trying to do like air 2 g to hydro eject, all these mm-hmm. different things. Um, but I think one of the biggest things is technology is the, one of the biggest changes yeah. coming our way. You know, uh, there are so many things coming out with uh, Toro. I think and it's more landscaping stuff right now, but like the, the 
electronic uh, battery powered like mowers that you're coming out and everything and yeah moving towards that i mean california banned all <laughs> two cycle engine machines it's like oh my gosh like we're it's coming faster than we expected you know yeah um is there any technology things that you've been able to add or you hope to add whether it's like soil sensors or anything like that uh to your field and is there anything that you hope to add maybe in the future yeah, I think the soil sensors is probably be a big one. I was actually talking to a rep about it and kind of gathering some more information on it. You know, it might probably won't happen this year because I'm trying not to make too many major adjustments my first year here. But that would definitely be something that's really beneficial, I think. Or maybe going to, you know, phone controlled irrigation might be something too. That way we can make adjustments on the fly, especially here in Columbia, whenever you get the pop up rain or the rain you weren't you know, anticipating to be quite as much or might have not been as much, you know, but other than that, I mean, we've got a pretty good fleet of equipment and our front office really does help us take care of that and make sure we do have what we need. So that's really nice. Always good to hear that. The phone is definitely a huge thing. That would be nice. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, uh, we have in Billings, which was really nice. Wow. Because, yeah. Look at that. So, <laughs> we don't get interns, but we've got the electronic well, irrigation. Everybody, Jeff actually owned his own irrigation company, so he had the uh, he had the in with it. Oh, he cheated the system, is what <laughs> yeah. you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> call him up, be like, "Hey, I know I'm yeah. far away, but could you maybe just maybe you know?" Yeah. Oh gosh, you know that'd be great. Uh, we sort of wrap up these again with these last two questions. Cause again, it's always interesting to hear the different thoughts and everything um, with everything going into, again, your first year as head groundskeeper. Is mm -hmm. there anything that you wish you knew going into the industry that you know now? And it's not to like make things easier, make things better or anything like that, but something that you would want to have known. Uh, and why would that be something you would want to know? I think just knowing how supportive the community is, is huge because I mean, there, there's so many hours that we work and so many stresses and different things that we're involved in that we do need support of. And I feel like just knowing how supportive everyone is, like you can reach out to anyone, ask them questions, whether it be about the field or even if it's a personal matter, like everyone is willing to help you 100% of the time, which is not common in many industries. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, and that's why, again, I, what I do is try to make people, again, younger people know about what we do. Mm -hmm. It's so true. And it's great to have. Uh, again, it, it's weird that people don't know about us, but at the same time, like, I don't see other industries having that, you know, you don't see engineers helping out other engineers, you know, yeah. it's more about, Oh, well, I need to make this bit. I'm not going to help you, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> certain things like that were, Again, sports, turf, golf, all these different, again, green industry, there's always going to be someone helping, you know? Yeah. It's not a competition. Well, it is a competition, you know? It's just all fun. And everybody's been through the same thing or some mm -hmm. version of it and always willing to help. So I couldn't agree with you more on that. Um, last thing with, uh, again, our students are young. They're learning about the industry. Again, not all of my students are going into turf or anything. Yeah. Um, but with those kids that are interested, you know, what would be your best words of advice for them uh, for thinking about joining our industry, thinking about doing something moving forward when it comes to turf grass? I really think that if you ask the questions, like there's no dumb question. And if you are always willing to put in the work, there's not really going to be many people that are just going to like blow you off or like not take interest in you. Like, as long as you're putting in that work, people are willing to help you, but you have to be willing to like show them that, you know, you're not just wanting them to drag you along or really like push you. Like you've got to be willing to do it. I'm going to agree with you more on that. Well, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope your first season goes amazing. Uh, hopefully we get to see you in a couple weeks down in Savannah. Yeah, definitely. Um, um with everything again just keep trucking along you're going to do awesome it's it's all about the grind right so yeah. yep. hopefully it's a, hopefully the weather treats you that's the only one thing that again if you could have one thing to control yeah the weather right yep uh i can't i can't thank you enough
Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. I've really enjoyed it.